adventures in working at an auto parts store. Part one, I guess. So tonight, I have a guy come in and uh, he's a bit fidgety, a bit off. Anyone who worked in retail, I'm sure they know that feeling where something ain't quite right with somebody. And I don't know if he'd been high drinking or just slightly off, but he's walking around the store. He comes in playing music off his phone real loud. And he eventually has some parts. I don't have the parts for him. He leaves, goes out to his car. I have a customer come in and said, yeah, dude, there's a guy that just want to let you know he's like drinking in his car and, you know, it just, he's acting kind of weird. I just wanted to let you, you know, warn you. And it's like, okay, we look out the window, he's drinking something out of a tall can, smoking either a cigarette or a drunk, we don't know. But we decided, you know, give him, uh, my co-worker decides to give the cops a call just in case because we don't want this guy, you know, if he, he's drunk because he's kind of acting a little bit like that. We don't want him going out there on the road and splattering himself off the road. The cops pull up. They interview him for a little while. But the thing is, he's asking me some questions about the antenna. I'm trying to find this part, you know, antenna. And right as he's laying in the, you know, kind of look away, and then he's gone. Well, that's when the cops come in, and, well, he's laying on the floor in front of my counter. So it was real weird. And the cops came out, talked to him for a little while, and eventually they all left, and then uh, he ended up leaving. But it was uh, quite an interesting night, to say the least. Day two of working at an auto parts store. Or part two, I guess, I don't know. I don't script these things. So nothing really interesting happened today. So I thought I'd, I'd talk about some of the people in general that we always have. If you're ever going to an auto parts store, please know either the year, make, and model of the vehicle you drive that you're going to inquire a part about. Please ignore the squeaking belt. Or bring the license plate or at least a picture of the license plate, or the VIN number, please bring one of those two. Because you would be surprised at how many people don't know what kind of car they drive. You spend thousands of dollars on this thing. You trust your life with it every time you drive it on the road. You trust your kid's life with it. And you don't know what you drive. It's just very interesting to me. We have a commercial account. And today he buys like $100 worth of parts. So he goes and he says, oh, I'm going to warranty him buy them first and then I'll send the other ones back and you'll warranty them. That's, that's like normally how warranties will work a lot of the time. And so he'll, he war you know, we sell them part, we send our driver out there past what we would normally send her home at or, you know, we send a moment, we send most of our drivers home at five and, you know, we're going about 5.30 and they pull up to the store and he just doesn't have the parts. He's not going to, it's like, oh, I don't have the parts to warranty. So basically he was just going to bring us the parts i'm not saying he was but he was gonna give us the old parts that weren't ours and warranty him sometimes i don't like commercial accounts sometimes i do i think that's it for today i'll see you tomorrow ventures and working at an auto parts store day three part three i don't know uh, nothing really interesting happened today Except our DC managed to, our, so our distribution center there is our, basically our giant warehouses. Decided to send us a pallet on a Sunday, which we never do. We never get a pallet on a Sunday. And we couldn't check it in. So we had all this stuff that was supposed to be in our stores, like what we're supposed to have. And we couldn't check any of it in. So like if we're supposed to have two things on hand and that's in that thing, we have two of them. Our computer will say two, but or our computer will say like zero. And the two of them are in the thing, but we can't check them in, so our whole thing's all screwed up. Can't think of anything else? So I think I'll talk about what I've had before. I don't know. Well, I'll do had one story. So this happened about a month ago it started. I had a guy come in, driving a Prius. I don't like Priuses very much. They're a bit annoying. Which requires a zero, or a five W, or sorry, a zero W30 oil. So this guy comes in, and he grabs a 5W30. And he's like, no, he's like, that's not the right oil. And he's like, well, this is O'Reilly's. It should be good oil. It's like, yes, but it's not the right type of oil. And he's talking to my assistant manager, and he keeps just randomly talking to me. I don't know if that's because she was a girl or not, whatever. But, you know, it's like really weird. I was like, no, it's not the right oil. We tell him this multiple times. And he ends up buying the oil anyway. Comes back about a month later. I'm getting off vacation, come back in. 
and then he's like, "This uh, wrong oil. You sold you sold me the wrong oil. It screwed up my car. You know, I, I need can I you know return it? You know, exchange this and what what are we? Gonna, well, I was like, we told you you bought the wrong oil, and it was the wrong oil. You put the wrong oil in your car, and then it screwed it up. It's not our fault. You bought the oil. It was the wrong oil. We told you it was the wrong oil. And then you proceed to put the wrong oil in your car, and screw up your car. Like what the heck? Then he wanted to talk to the regional manager. He wanted to go all the way up the ladder. So we gave him the numbers. I'm sure he just wanted to get something free. I don't know. I think that's it for tonight. I don't know. It's been good. It's good. Good talk. Good talk. J5, I think, or 4, I don't know, uh, working at an auto parts store. I've been working a lot longer than five days. I've been working for over a year and a half. I figure that all the videos I've filmed so far have been kind of more on the negative sides working at an auto parts store. Trust me, it's not all negative. There are quite a few good things. You know, you get to know your customers. You'll have some repeat customers that you really get to like and you really get to know. And they kind of become like cool friends, but you only see them at work, you know. Like I had one guy come in today who I've, I, you know, he's come in the past couple times and, you know, you know, we both have a common interest of anime, so we always talk a little about it. I got stickers on my car, he's got stickers on his car, you know, so it's cool to make that connection. You kind of network when you do this kind of job. You make some good connections, you make new people, you know, it's a really cool job. You know, you get, get you know, hopefully you get some good coworkers. I have some good coworkers. Uh... Fortunately, my assistant manager, it's her last day tomorrow. You know, I hope, I wish her luck. Uh, but it's been a great, you know, been a great time working there. Uh, hopefully for many more days I shall work at this place. Uh, I do like this job, you know. It's been, it's been good, very good, good. All right. That is all. <laughs> Part five of working at an auto parts store. So I wasn't sure what to talk about this one. I'm still kind of thinking about it. But I thought I'd talk about headlights. I know a lot of people like, you know, everyone, every car's got a head, set of headlights. But we, at my particular location, we do not put headlights in. We do not install headlights. It's not really a service we have. And some vehicles, I mean, we'll try. We'll try if each, each person has a different skill level, you know, we'll, we'll try and put a headlight in. So don't expect us to be able to, because some cars are ridiculously hard to do. Like two thousand, I think it's two thousand ten Ford Fusions, Ford Fusions. You, you got to take the whole front of the car apart just to get to the headlights, and we ain't gonna do it in a parking lot at eight o'clock at night while I have a line of people out, out the door. I, I'm just not gonna do that. I'm not really have a line out the people with COVID. We can only have like twenty three people in the store, but you know you get the point. Uh, you know, and some be like German German vehicles, and any German brand vehicle makes it extremely difficult. It's like headlights burn out but come on don't make me have to take apart a whole car just to, just to put a headlight in just, just please make it easy I don't know what else to talk about tonight but I thought I'd share that alright I think this episode is done have a good night alright part 6 of working at an auto parts store so I had an interesting one today nothing too extreme nothing too weird i got one i got two stories i guess today so today i had a guy come in you know walks in we say hey, hello welcome, you know uh can help find anything today or kind of standard greeting and he's like no i, I got it i got it he goes to the fuse section finds fuse he's looking for comes back up to me and just check out he goes want to hear something funny it's like oh sure i'm always good for a laugh you know especially during covid because everything is it's not as funny anymore but he goes so I got, you know, I got a thermostat at my house and I, I recently rewired, I had a, you know, I had to rerun the wires for it. This is this fancy one that tells you everything's wrong. And I was like, I could not figure it out. It just wouldn't work after I rewired it. And I was like, no, it's rewired, right? And, you know, and they got all these motherboards on it. I was like, well, and then as I, you know, it was like, well, I looked around it and I saw this fuse on the back and I pull it out and it's like, E, E, you know, I have every single fuse, but I don't have an E. E, e, and he goes, I, I spent like 30 minutes racking my brain for it. And then I realized it was a three. And I was like, oh my God. It was, like, it was a three fuse. So then I came down here. was like, ain't that stupid? And I was like, ain't the worst. I've heard worse. All right, and the number two. This is also a, a warning message, whatever. 
anyone who come, calls into an auto parts store in like the last hour, not even the last hour, if you're going to come and get a battery done, I know if it's emergency, yeah, but if you're going to need a battery and you pull into the parking lot and it's 10 to 5 minutes till closing, please don't. <laughs> Because it's not... A battery takes some time normally. And we normally have to check out the battery. We have to put the battery in. Take the battery in, Ring it all up. And do it. And then we have to put it in the car. And hope it starts. Because the majority of the time it starts. But some newer vehicles just don't. They have problems. And then if there's another problem with the car, it can just happen. I had that happen one time. It was like the first month that I was working here at my location. And I was... Uh, closing with one of the older guys who you know he was my like favorite co-worker and it was like i'm not kidding probably a half hour till we closed and this lady pulls up we, we swapped the battery out for this car and and apparently the battery was not necessarily just the problem but right as we try to start it the starter just decides to just die so the starter dies the battery was good i did die all right but then the car just wouldn't start and it was like for a first month when you're like first month in an auto parts store and like the second third battery you do oh that that's a great feeling right there but we ended up getting all sorted out and ended up being a starter she had took it to a shop and it was the starter that just happened to quit right at the same time so all right i think that's all for tonight this was a longer part hopefully that'll be a part seven and i'll chain all these together all right have a good night part seven of working at an auto parts store. I probably have to wait till the belt stops squeaking. It's cold, so it's gonna do that. I don't even know if you can hear me now. Right as I stopped recording, the belt shut up, so now it sounds good, hopefully. All right, so it rained today, if, and if you're ever going to an auto parts store when it's raining, and if the auto part employees seem a bit short with you or not in the best mood, cut them a little slack because they most likely have had to change a dozen pair of wiper blades in the rain and are now cold and wet. Because a lot of people, at least in here in, in, in California, don't know their wipers are bad until it starts to rain. And then no one can drive and no one ha can see out of their car because they got bad wiper blades. And it, it's just, it's just, a thing. it's a California thing. So let's see, part six. So what I was going to talk about in this episode, I, I don't even know. What kind of crazy thing happened today? Uh, you know, maybe I'll just sum it all up. Sum it up, working at an auto parts store. Good thing. If you ever want to work at an auto parts store, how about this? You cannot take anything personally you will not survive because <laughs> they're there you know it's not the best when some people are kind of just people oh my light dimmed let me turn that off um i got i got the power going to the ac or the heater or that thing well you know otherwise it's real good it's real fun it, it's great to work on an auto parts store you get all them crazy stories and hopefully through these videos i'll probably make more I share them crazy experiences with you. I don't know how this is going to turn out. This is probably long. And just thank you for watching. You know, me ramble about working at an auto parts store and working in customer service. And I'm sure a lot of people who work in customer service know this. It's hard sometimes, and sometimes it's good. But it's uh, it's always interesting. All right, I think that will be the end of this one. Not much information. All right. Have a good one. Just another quick proof that us auto shop workers or us auto parts workers are not always mechanics. This is my daily. I got the check engine light on. I got the SRS light on. The seatbelt actually is. I just took my seat off because I'm parked. And brake, well, brake lights, that's, that's no problem. Uh, my fuel gauge don't quite work. Um, this is a manual transmission. This is neutral. Oh, hold on. That's first gear. My first gear shouldn't do that. Neither should my second gear. Third, much better. Fourth, much better. Fifth, yeah, that's better. Should not be doing this. So we're not all quite mechanics. And sometimes we, we're just, it's not worth fixing. <laughs>